www.cliffcentral.com forward slash donate. Dr. Zakia, what is the essential difference between the term toba and the term makfira, meaning, I believe, forgiveness? Makfira means forgiveness, and istikfar means seeking forgiveness. Istikfar, the meaning, is of two types. One type of meaning is when it comes along with the word toba. And the other meaning is when it comes individually. When it comes individually, it has one and the same meaning. The meaning can be interchanged, it means exactly the same. But the scholars, they say, when it comes along with the word Tawbah, then istikfar, it means that we are seeking protection from the past evils that we used to do. And Tawbah, when it comes along with istikfar, it means that we are repentant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are seeking protections from the things which we may indulge in future. So basically istikfar means seeking protection from the things of the past which we used to do and tawbah seeking protection for the things which may unfortunately we may indulge in future. So this is the basic difference. If it comes separately, the meaning is one and the same. If it comes together, then it has two different meanings. It's good we're going through this technical definition phase in every episode. I think this is something which is missing amongst the brothers and sisters, is the real understanding of the basic terms. The next question really for me would be, why is it such a special thing to seek repentance during this holy, blessed month of Ramadan? This month is special because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives His slaves, His servants, the maximum in this month. Therefore, it is given the title Ramadan, the month of forgiveness. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in the Hadith of Tirmidhi, in the book of fasting, Hadith number 682, where our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, that when the first night of Ramadan comes, the devils and the demons, they are chained. And the gates of hell are closed. Not even a single gate is open. And the gates of heaven, they are open. Not even a single gate is closed. And the caller, he calls to the people that, Oh, those who want to do good, please come. And those who are doing evil, please desist. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ransoms his slaves. And he does that every night of Ramadan. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallam, he further said, it's mentioned in a Sahih Hadith of Tirmidhi, Hadith number 3545, where the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallam, once he goes on the pulpit before giving a khutbah and he says, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen thrice. So the people ask, that oh messenger, why? So the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Archangel Gabriel had come to him and said that anyone who does not have his sins forgiven after Ramadan is approached and enters the hellfire, ask Allah to keep a distance from him. And then Gabriel says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Say Ameen. So Muhammad Sallallahu says, Ameen. Means it's unfortunate that anyone witnesses the month of Ramadan and does not have his sins forgiven because this is the month of forgiveness. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of fasting, Hadith number 1901, that if anyone fasts in the complete month of Ramadan with belief and seeking the reward of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, all his past sins will be forgiven. That's the reason Ramadan is called as the month of forgiveness. SubhanAllah. And Dr. Zakia, we used to have a saying back in the days before I embraced Islam that I wish it could be Christmas every day. And I'm going to say, I wish it could be Ramadan every day now, <laughs> more appropriately. What about the necessities of seeking repentance, especially during this holy month of Ramadan? And what are the merits of seeking forgiveness? It is compulsory for every believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for every Muslim, that if he does anything, whether minor or major, small or big, he should repent as soon as possible. Repentance is compulsory for any sin that you have committed. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31, O oh, you believe, turn altogether in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may attain bliss, so that you may become successful, so that you may enter paradise. Allah gives a similar message in Surah Tahrim, chapter number 66, verse number 8, that, O oh, you believe, Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincere repentance. And Allah further says in the Quran, in Surah Hud, chapter number 11, verse number 3, that 
ask for forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his repentance so that he may do good to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Shura, chapter number 42, verse number 25, that he accepts repentance and forgives sins and asks for forgiveness. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of forgiving and most merciful. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 39, that if the thief, if he repents and if he changes his acts after repenting, if he has changed his acts, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns to him in forgiveness. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of forgiving and most merciful. Allah repeats the similar message in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 74. That ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, for he is of forgiving and most merciful. Besides several verses of the Quran, there are several hadith which speak about the merit of Tawbah. For example, if you read the hadith of a beloved Prophet Muhammad sallam, in Sahih Bukhari, word number 8, book of applications, hadith number 6307, where a beloved Prophet Muhammad sallam, he says that I ask for forgiveness and repentance more than 17 times a day. Imagine our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallam, who is the best of examples, who is the best human being on the face of the earth. He says that he asks for forgiveness and repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than 70 times a day. It further mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number 4, in the book of Dikr, hadith number 6523, where a beloved Prophet said, O believers, you should repent. And I repent every day hundred times to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's mentioned in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, volume number 4, in the book of repentance, hadith number 6644, that a beloved Prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stretches out his hand during the night for the people who repent for the sins they have committed from dawn to dusk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stretches out his hand during the day for the people who repent for the sins they have committed from dusk to dawn until the sun rises from the west that means until the day of resurrection that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sins until the day of resurrection whoever repents a similar hadith is mentioned in Sahih Muslim point number 4 in the book of Dikar hadith number 6525 where our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep on forgiving for anyone who repents until the sun rises from the west. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the sins until the day of resurrection if any of his slaves, any of his servants ask for forgiveness. Further, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, in the book of Rika, hadith number 6438, where the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, that if the son of Adam was given a valley of gold, he would yet want a second one. And if a second valley of gold is given to him, he would want the third. For there is nothing that fills the stomach of the son of Adam except dust. This shows that the greed the human beings have. And irrespective of how much Niyama Allah gives, he always seeks for more and more. Rather, he should repent and ask for forgiveness. And there's a different version of the hadith that quoted earlier. It's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number 4, in the book of Dikr, hadith number 6613, where a beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more pleased when his servant repents, when his servant asks for forgiveness, than a person who while traveling on his camel in the desert he stops for rest and he sleeps beneath a tree and when he wakes up, he sees his camel laden with goods, he is not there. So he climbs on a mound and he tries to find the camel, he does not find it. He climbs on the second mound but yet doesn't find it. He climbs on the third mound, he doesn't find it. Then he turns back to the original position and there he sees his camel laden with the goods and he is so happy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more happy than a person who finds his lost camel laden with goods in the desert. Allah is more happy than that when a person asks for forgiveness when he repents. So these are the merits of 
repentance and tawbah. It reminds me of my own journey to Islam once again. Month of Ramadan, this is when I found my fitrah. Alhamdulillah.